Well, Ann Coulter, the best-selling author, uh, you know, she's written the Trump book. It's called In Trump We Trust. If you haven't gotten that yet, get that book, and uh, you can go to annculter.com. You can also get a new column there, annculter.com. Ann Coulter, how you doing? Fantastic. How are you, Mark Simone? Good. Everybody loved that speech. Even Van Jones on CNN had to say nice things about the speech. Um, no, it was magnificent, and it's everything Trump has been saying all along. I, I mean, I do want to. There are a few points that need to be made against what the media is saying. Um, uh, they kept saying during during the campaign, "Oh, is he going to talk like this at the at the State of the Union address?" And no, we would say you talk differently when you talk to your boss or your mother or your girlfriend. Always different. Your little kids. Um, so this was everything he's been saying. It was just delivered in a State of the Union, a formal and beautiful format, something he's not usually used to giving. Um, but this is everything he's promised us. There is nothing new here. So I'm really getting a little fed up with the media saying, oh, Republicans and Democrats were encouraged by his change in tone. <laughs> no, the reason that was a great speech was because he has great ideas. It is the message, the message, the message, and that's a message that not one other Republican in that room could have given, putting Americans first, saying, I'm not the president of the world, I'm president of the United States of America. Why has it taken my entire lifetime to get a president to say that? Um, so he was absolutely magnificent, but he has not changed anything. Also, isn't it odd that um, the fake news we got from the media before the speech, that th- this is starting to be like a regular thing with them, um, the, the, the claim that Trump was going to be softening his position on immigration and he was going to launch a plan for a path to legalization for, for illegals. And I wasn't particularly worried because this has happened before. It's not consistent. I mean, starting with with his opening Mexican rapist speech, he's been pretty clear that when it comes to immigration as well as every other policy, he's going to put the interests of the American people first, which is a major change for the entire discussion of immigration. We always have to fixate on the one poor little illegal immigrant as opposed to the Americans who's, who, who are losing jobs, whose whose relatives are being mowed down in drunk driving accidents, whose taxes are going through the roof to pay for English as a second language class. No, we never, never talk about changed communities and and how Americans are feeling. So this is consistent from the beginning, but it it does make me wonder, and I would like um, some some reporter to stop, you know, (laughs) writing fake news and find out who is the reporter? Apparently this news came out because at a meeting with reporters before, before the State of the Union address, Trump was asked, are you open to a path for legalization, um, path to legalization for illegal aliens? There's something neurotic and insane about this. What does he have to do to, to convey that's not really on the table? It's been 18 months, Mark Simone. Will they ever shut up about that? No, they cannot believe that he really isn't going to join them and play by their rules and join the club. They, they actually can't believe he's going to stick to what he is. It would be as if every question from the media to a Democrat is, um, are, are you open to passing a law repealing Roe v. Wade? Are you open to that? Are you open to that? Um, another question, Mr. President. How about, are we going to overturn Roe v. Wade? <laughs> uh, no! <laughs> Democrats love abortion. What, when are you going to get the message that immigration is going to be designed and and what we care about is how Americans, and, and that includes recent immigrants, the people who already live here, that's what we're focused on. But I really think it's absolutely crazy that an, a reporter, once again, is asking this question, are you open to a path to legalization for illegals? Well, you know, the other thing, if you think about the media strategy here, the New York Times, Washington Post, if you write 27 attack articles a day, you attack them nonstop, day and night for months from the beginning... What would happen if he actually did do something wrong and you had to go after him? Nobody would listen to you anymore. I know. Who would even pay attention? I know. I was thinking that um, not only actually doing something wrong, but actually doing something really hardcore and right-wing in a way that, that Muslim, um, I'll, I'll refer to it affectionately as the Muslim ban, the brief travel ban from seven terrorist nations, um, the way... The left and the media reacted to that um, exactly as you say. Um, that is 
that is a, a limitation, a brief limitation on immigration that could have been done by Obama. It, it, it was so moderate. It was so prudent. It was so limited. And the fact that the left went crazy over that, you know, you may as well just go whole hog and have a Muslim ban. <laughs> Well, you can't do that. Why? No, terrible. Nothing. Oh, I just want to say, there's nothing unconstitutional about a Muslim ban. This is nonsense. Well, we've, we've done it before. Against... Jimmy Carter had a ban on uh, Iranians. And... For 20 years, we discriminated against Christians in the old Soviet Union. Well, against. Well, um... <laughs> Don't tell me you can't have, you know, like, restrictions or, or preferences on certain religions. No, most of these journalists got in under that preference for for Jews from the old Soviet Union, and now they're they're running around saying, "Oh, a religious ban or 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 re- religious discrimination." That's outrageous. Really, how did you get here? Wait, on uh, let me ask you this: On Saturday, they chose the DNC chairman. They went with Perez instead of Ellison. Ellison has a mm-hmm. horrible history of anti-Semitism, but I think it's become pretty clear that Ellison is kind of partners with this guy now. Uh, even they, last night when they spoke, they both spoke together. Uh, so Ellison is the biggest anti-Semite history of horrible stuff. How do they ever call Trump an anti-Semite again now? That's another weird thing about the media. This this incessant, um, will you just go on the record, Mr. President, you do not beat your wife. <laughs> Why is Trump constantly having to prove in negatives about himself it is like we're, we're we're getting the old david duke question you know every 10 minutes with this guy um and as i've said before i think david duke died 20 years ago because the only time i ever hear about him is every four years when republican <laughs> candidates for president are asked to disavow him he has no followers he's not even i mean he's not even a member of this organization i think he's dead he, he's run for president of course uh, or not president run for office as both a democrat and a republican so you know screw you the Klan was an outgrowth of the Democratic Party. This is such craziness coming from our media. But now that question from, what's his name, Greg Melvin, I think, or um, whatever it is on MSNBC, last week to, to President Trump, will you, once and for all, disavow anti-Semitism? <laughs> I, I mean, I really think the only answer to that is, will you, Mr. Melvin, here and now, um, disavow that you are a child molester. <laughs> well, you know, Trump, every, half his family is Jewish. Everybody close to him is oh, Jewish. don't or, even make the argument. Well, I'm about to just say, here comes Ellison, a real anti-Semite who's been associated with the worst anti-Semitism stuff. Nobody asks him anything. No, of course not. This is all for, for show. It, it, it shows you what a man Trump is, is right about many of these media organs. And I would like to say again, as I pointed out before, this hysteria with them saying Trump is attacking the media. No, he is attacking the propagators of fake news. And I, I, I thought we were all agreed that, that when the media starts putting out fake news, that is a threat to democracy. And many of these media organs, um, certainly the New York Times, CNN, ABC, NBC, CBS, Washington Post, whoa, they are putting out fake news. That is, that does make them the enemy of the American people, unless they're just saying, oh, no, we're Lenny Riefenstahl. Our news every day, it's going to be triumph of the will, day after day after day, and that's, and that's a free press. No, this is propaganda. It's outrageous. It is a threat to democracy. Trump is right about that. He is not attack- attacking the media. It's because he loves the First Amendment and the media that he's attacking the, the fake media, the media putting out propaganda. Hey, in the CNN poll, the fake uh, CNN poll, they had Trump at 78 uh, percent approve of the speech. So imagine what the real number must have been. I know. <laughs> must have been 98 percent. I know. Yeah, that, yeah, no, that's that's completely true. I was watching it, thinking, what are as I was tweeting, what what are they going to do? All they can do is what they have done to Trump's other speeches, like that magnificent Phoenix speech he gave after the last time he was allegedly softening his position on immigration. Um, they just don't let the public see it, and I want all of your listeners to be aware of this. Um, if you watch MSNBC or CNN, you will not see lots of sections of Trump's speech being replayed. Oh, 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 my favorite part of the whole speech, which we should be making, clipping right yes. now, I'm making for ads in 2018, um, when Trump came out for a, for a special... Um, um, to do a special commission to help the victims of illegal immigrant crime. Oh, voice. And instantly. 
instantly. The Democrats, it's like when you wake somebody up in the middle of the night, what is their reaction? Well, that was a to big, boo! It was a they big groan. and booed. <laughs> that is their feeling about Americans. America, wake up the elite to hate you. <laughs> well, Ann Coulter, I hate to say we're out of time, but everybody, just go to AnnCoulter.com. Make sure. Sure, you got her book in Trump We Trust. That's the Trump book. I know everybody else is writing one now, but this is the Trump book in Trump We Trust. And get her column. Uh, you can go to AnnCoulter.com. Are you on Hannity tonight, I think? Why, yes, I am. Well, you're going to see her on Hannity tonight on Fox. And uh, Ann Coulter, thanks for being with us. Good to talk to you, Mark Simone. Bye-bye. All right, take care.